quite this so. So there are so many methods. But this is, this can be seen or this can be perceived, Vishaya as something which is beyond our objects. So whatever objects are in the world, which you have heard of, which you have seen, which are available in any Encyclopedia Britannica or any of the special technological dictionaries of the world, it is beyond the thought. You will not find it enumerated in any catalog. So it is something which has transcended all the objects. That which is finally seen as one which has transcended all the objects. This is one. But the other one which just excites me as slightly better even perhaps, I mean this is only in my own personal opinion. Vishayati the Gocharam means that which can be seen only by those people who have transcended all the objects of the world, who have got this passion, who are not interested in any objects of the world, only those people can perceive him. So long as we are having some hankering in our mind for some objects of the world, you can never go to that level at all. So the first requisite is that you have to forget the world. The world and God are two opposite ends. If you have to get the one up to some distance, you can travel on both you wires. But finally, you can't continue to travel. You have to leave the one wire of the world to reach the other wire of the God. So, Vishayati the Gocharam means Vishayati Tanam Jananam Gocharam. That which can be perceived only by those people who have developed an utter dispassion and detachment towards all worldly objects who have transcended all the worldly objects. For them it can be seen easily. This is another interpretation possible. See, these are all divine words. And the divine words can mean hundreds of meanings according to our vasanas. According to our vasanas, they can give different meanings to different people. And each meaning is perfectly okay, that is no problem. I have once told you about the, I think the story of Buddha, we have told that issue from the Upanishads. So in that way, the same word, it is being interpreted by people according to their vasana, according to their conditioning. That is how it comes. It doesn't mean that something is wrong or something alone is correct. We give something which is perhaps true to the day, which will be more useful for the people at that time. And later on somebody interprets in a different way or some other time, it goes on. The same Bhagavad Gita was sent by Shankara. Years later Ramanja has translated. He has given a different meaning. Perhaps at that time, it is that meaning which was required by the world. The world could come to the top level at which Shankara lived. So later on when Madhvacharya came, it had been diluted still further and given. So it's all likely about the timings, the various interpretations of that. So with this we stop. So he is giving 
giving us some of the attributes, the so-called attributes. It's not an attribute. It is only a method of describing the indescribable, that which cannot be contemplated upon, that which cannot be thought about. We have to find out some method of approaching the nearest to it. So yesterday we finished with the first line. So I don't want to go with it again. So the second line is Abhibhāsya Matandekam That Supreme Being, that Supreme Consciousness, it is Abhibhāsya. We can all talk, it's all words. You can say Consciousness, you can say Supreme Consciousness, you can say most Supreme Consciousness, but what does it mean? in actual terms to us when we see. What are the nuances of expression that are supposed to signify? So it is Abhibhavya. That's all. We can use those words. We can only think that it's something which is super, super, super. That's all. It is something about all. It is something which is unique. There is no comparison. There is no analogy. There is no simile. Something which we have never thought about, something which has never been in our vocabulary at all. So it is Abhibhavya. Bhavana means the thought. Vibhavya means that which can be thought of. Abhibhavya, that which cannot be thought of. You cannot use your imagination, whatever imagination you may use, and you may try to make an image of the Supreme Consciousness, it will be something far, far different from whatever you can conceive of. No concepts can reach it, no mind can reach it. It is that that you will be conscious. Abhibhavya. Asandeha. That truth is something about which there can be no doubt. Whenever you reach face to face with the Supreme Consciousness, whenever you realize that self, you will have no doubts left. Now, supposing I am worshipping Lord Shiva. I have been worshipping on his form with the magic hair, with the trident and all that. And suddenly in my vision one day, even when I am not meditating in the Sunday, with my open eyes, somebody walks in and says, Well, my dear devotee, I am highly pleased with you. I am Lord Shiva. You shall be praying the magic hand. Do you think I'll be a fool to accept him? No. No modern man will accept him. He will say, sure. Thank you. I'll talk to you. Please show me any identity card issued by the heavens. Otherwise, you know, nowadays there are so many curious cats who are coming. I have met three Shivas already was the fourth one. So, nobody will believe. There will be a doubt. But is he the genuine one or is he not? But when once you read the highest state of Supreme Consciousness, you will automatically know that this is the truth. There cannot be anything but this. No doubt will be that. It is read, it is said, it is said in the Upanishad. Vidyate Hridaya Granthi Siddhyante Samasamsaya The knot which is in our heart, which is responsible for accepting our view of the ultimate consciousness, it will be blown to pieces. And Chidyante Samasamsya, all your doubts, any type of doubts as to the nature of the consciousness, will I be able to recognize it when it comes? Will it be an energy? How will I know that I have reached that stage? All of your doubts will be set at rest automatically. When I'm sure reach that supreme consciousness, this is what is told in the That final one he self-revealing knowledge. So as it, that is a knowledge where there is no scope for any doubts whatsoever. Till that day the doubts will be there. It is told that even the great Saraka, Sarandara and Saratkumara, the four first bonds of Brahma, who are born out of his mentality, they were all born from the books. Even while at birth, they were aware of the Supreme Consciousness in Atman. 
even such people had thousands of doubts. Every day they used to go to Lord Shiva and ask him, Sir, please tell me, what is Pratyagatma? What is the relationship between Pratyagatma and Buddhasta? Who is Buddhasta? All sorts of doubts they used to have. Finally, the Lord had to answer them in silence on the 365th day on the Shivaratri day. This was told by Bhagavan himself. And when somebody is with doubt, sir, this is a story I have never heard of, that for 365 days these people were going in daily questioning him. We know that on the Shivaratri day he told it to all these saints. But this is something new. Bhagavan answered, yes, this is how it happened. Who can tell him this authority unless he had been the very Dakshina Mukti himself who had taught to this sir. We have the philosophy to talk like that. To such great sages, yes, this is what happened. Nobody had asked the question in the So, Avibhavyam Asandeham Tadaham Naprasumsya. So, that I am. That unimaginable, that which is beyond imagination, that supreme consciousness, that eternal absolute. That I am. There is no doubt about it. That I am. So this is the part of meditation. But it all looks so easy. Even the next one I will tell you today. But there are. It is as complex as it looks easy. Because there are likelihood of misunderstanding it completely. Suppose it looks really easy. Yes, I am that. What is that? So I will say, I am that. That which is inconceivable, that which is beyond imagination, that which has no eyes, that which has no ears, that which is unique, that which is not the body. Yes, yes. You can do it in a routine manner, repeating it like a mantra. But there are pitfalls. I will tell you the next one. Maham eva paro devaha sarva mantra mayasivaha Sarva mantra yati tatcha shristi samhara arjita This is in continuation of the contemplation. Continue. I am that. Which then? Ahameva parodeva. I am the supreme abundant being. I am the supreme deity. I am the deity of the deities. I am the god of the gods. I am the Supreme One. Ahameva Paro Deva. What is meant by Para? What do you mean by Supreme? In what we mean Supreme? Not only in his capacity, he is Supreme because you can't catch him. In economics, you know, there is a law of demand and supply. That which is in plenty available, you can have it for a penny each. But that which is rare, which, are, which is not easily accessible, say a diamond, you know how much it costs life. You can't get it anywhere. So it's a question of demand and supply. So, this is the Lord whom you cannot catch with all your senses of perception. You cannot catch him with your eyes, you cannot catch him with your ears, you cannot perceive him through any of the means with which you are equipped for cognizing any object in the world because he is not the object at all. He is not an object. How can you objectify him? The one who has created all the objects, he cannot be an object in them. So, Varaha means transcendental. The one who is beyond all the senses, who cannot be grasped by the senses of perception, who is beyond that. He is called it transcendental. And naturally, he has to be something special something unique and hence we call him a supreme. Here, when you say that I am the supreme being, you go on thinking of it. The question is which I you are thinking? Which I? The moment the meditator, Sri Chandananda is the meditator, he is sitting, Aham, Aham Eva Parodhyava. When I am the meditator, that I, obviously I will think 
ఐదు శాఖల అందా విత్ దిస్ బియాండ్ విత్ దిస్ బాడీ అండ్ ఐ యామ్ ద మెడిటేటర్ ఐ యామ్ ద బ్రహ్మ యు బి సోర్లీ మిస్టేక్ యు బి సోర్లీ మిస్టేకెన్ బికాస్ దట్ ఐ డెసెంట్ రిఫర్ టు ద బాడీ మైండ్ కాంప్లెక్స్ ఇట్ డెసెంట్ రిఫర్ టు ద సెన్సెస్ ద కంప్లెక్స్ ఆఫ్ సెన్సెస్ ఇట్ డెసెంట్ రిఫర్ టు ఎనీథింగ్ విచ్ కెన్ బి సీన్ అట్ ఆల్ అండ్ ఇఫ్ యు థింక్ ఆఫ్ దట్ ఐ seeing the eye which is behind the ego the eye which is behind all the senses the eye which makes me active the one which activates every faculty of mind it is that eye i do not know but there is there is an eye so you should know that otherwise the entire meditation might become a waste there is a beautiful anecdote to illustrate it in one of the biggest of the Upanishads known as Chandogya Upanishad. In Chandogya Upanishad in his ninth chapter there is a very good story. Indra the head of gods and Virochana the king of Asuras both happened to be at a conference where Brahma the Prajapati was having a satsang. In the Shatsang, Prajapati declared, he made one of the biggest proclamations. The proclamation he made was, the one who knows that Atman, Atman is something very supreme. The one who knows the Atman, the Dharma, the Chalo, Prana, Prodi, he will be able to go to any region or so ever, the seventh day heaven, the sixth day heaven, the fifth day heaven. So wherever you want, just that only think of it you will be there and you will be able to enjoy whatever you think the enjoyment will be there immediately and sarvagam chagaman aapnoti whatever he desires all the desires will be accomplished in the twinkling of the eye in a trice yamatam aasmanam anuvidya vijanati so try to find out the atman If only you find out that Atman and you become friends with him, look here, all these things are possible. All your desires to be accomplished. You can become the Lord of all the worlds. Who? Oh, Indra said, I would like to become. Virochana said, I would like to become. But the question is, who is that the Lord Atman? They went to all the districts. They didn't find. Oh my God. Then we have to go and ask the Prajapati, the creator, to address it. Both of them go. Both of them start and go and on the way both meet. Both don't talk to each other. The one wants to keep it a secret because he doesn't want another competitor to become the Lord of all the worlds. So neither talk to each other. They reach Prajapati. They don't talk to Prajapati. Prajapati doesn't even take cognizance of these two chaps who have come. There are so many there. He is running his own Dharmar. He is not bothered. These people go there, they join his retinue of Prajapati, they go on serving him, they serve in the kitchen, they go and draw water, whatever is required they are doing, they are serving the Prajapati for 32 years, they never open their mouth. Because unless the Guru recognizes and asks the disciple till that time, that means the Shishya is not mature enough to be called by the Guru. The Guru is all-knowing. If only he knew that this fellow deserves the answer to the question, he would have immediately known, he would have called them, he would have given them the audience. The fact that he ignored them, they were well aware that that means our antenna is not at fit, it has got to be defined. They observed the pure Brahmacharya and severe austerities and lived there for 32 years. Suddenly one day, the Guru recognized them. He said, hey, you too. I think we have been here for quite some time. Come on, let us know what you want. These people told him, sir, you were talking that day in the conference about some Atman. By knowing him, one can become the Lord of all the worlds and all this year she could get accomplished. You would like to know that Atman. Oh, yeah. Both of them told the same thing. He said, come on. He took them to a room. He says, each one sees the other side. 
पुरुषार्थिन निश्चित एहसास में दी यू सी ए प्रसन्न इन दू जस्ट लुक इट इट यू सी ए रिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ यूर इमेज दैट इन ए स्मॉल मिनी वे यू मिनी रिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ यूर सेल्फ यू आर सी इट दैट इज ऑफ गो then let him go so if this reflection is atman then i am sure the reflection in the mirror they should be the atman or if i see myself as a reflection in some water then that also should be the atman all right come along i'll show you he takes in your tank full of water come on look there What do you see? She says, "Anaka gram, arumedha, atma anyevichcha." From top to toe, we are seeing ourselves. It is pretty rupam. It is my duplicate. We are seeing our duplicate there. Yes, that is the atma. Go and dress yourself very nicely. Adorn yourself with all the headgear, with all the uh, various necklaces and all that. And come along. They went and dressed themselves beautifully. Adorned themselves. They came back. Look into the tank. They saw. What do you see? We see ourselves very well dressed, beautiful, elegant. That is all. Get out. Virachana will satisfy. Oh my Lord! I thought that Atman is something very very difficult to obtain. It is my body. She is referring to my body. So. When he says you are the Atman, he means me, this beautiful body. That means I have to keep this body nicely. It is this body which will ultimately take me to accomplish all my desires in the world, and it is this body which will enable me to become the Lord of all the three worlds. I should keep it strong and fit and nourishing. I should nourish it well. Oh, it's so easy! I can do it. Why not? He goes, and from that day he becomes a real Asura. Asura means a dumb, but the word, the etymology of the word Asura means Asushu Ramate iti Asura, the one who revels in enjoyments of the world. They are all dumb. It's a demonical tendency to completely revel in comfort, joy, pleasure after pleasure, to deeply involved in it. That is the demonical tendency. And from that day, they all became asuras. They used to keep their body fit, go to the gymnasium, from morning all the way to exercises. And not only that, they said this body is very important. So even when they when they died, the corpses well adorned and all that, and with great respect, the corpses taken because it's the body. The body is awesome. Awesome. So this is how they mistook the moment they said, "You, we are likely to mistake the aham life." But Indra was not so easily satisfied. While going back in between, he thought, "How can it be? If my body is going to be the Atman, then whatever comes to the body will come to the Atman." But then, on the same day of proclamation, he said, "Atman is something which is not affected by priya priya or nasrishata. It is not affected by the other forms, and it is always there. It is permanent." It is imperishable. It is immutable. But the body is going to perish one day. Then the Atman will perish. Then when the question of Atman then, no, no, it cannot be. When my body gets arthritis, Atman will get arthritis. How can be? Atman, Atman is free from all afflictions and sorrows, so it cannot be. So there is something wrong in my understanding. <coughs> Goes back. Brahma doesn't even look at him. Again, on the thirty-two years of Brahmacharya and austerities. Again, he asks him, "Sir, who is the Atman?" He says, "Look here. You are asleep. You are seeing a dream. The one who is playing in the dream as you, he is the Atman. The one who is playing in the dream that is I myself. It is I who play. I see myself there." So he desires. Oh, so I am the Atman. He goes back. He is not satisfied. How can it be? The dream wants to come to an end one day. That means the Atman is dead. So how 
can be the dream man, the one who is residing over the body, the ethereal body, the subtle body, which is acting in the sapna, in your dream, how can it be the Atman? No, no, it cannot be. After all, this sapna state is as good as the waking state. If I get good and bad things, I get good and bad things. If I weep in a waking state, I do weep in my sleeping, in my dreaming state also. So how can the Atman weep? How can the Atman die? I die in the waking state and I die in the sleeping state. Uh, rather in the uh, dream state, so it can't be. <coughs> so it can't be. He goes back. Prajapati doesn't take progressions of him. Another 32 years of brahmacharya and austerity. He serves him. And he asks him, Yes, Sindra, what is the matter like? Yes, sir, I am not satisfied with the answer. It can't be. It can't be? All right. The one who is presiding over your body during your sleep, when you are absolutely happy, that is the one. He couldn't understand. When I am asleep, I am not aware of any Purusha, I am not aware of any being at all. I am completely unconscious like, how can Atman be unconscious? No, 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 it cannot be. It cannot be I. Again he goes back, another 32 years of Brahmacharya and austerities. <coughs> and finally, Brahman gives him what is Atman. It's a beautiful, uh, it's a very beautiful dissertation. The idea I was telling it is, Ahyameva Paro Devaha, we are likely to think that I the Shantanta with all the fear, I am the Devata, so this body is the Devata, we will become Roshan. So that is why it is extremely important when you are doing the so down. When you take so much, so much of a pain to know what is that, what are its attributes, but they are not expected in the Agam, they are left it to you. Everything cannot be revealed. There should be something left for your intelligence. And that is why they are not being told. So, like this, there are ever so many secrets inside. Unless you know them all, you are likely to commit grave blunders in such meditation. And these blunders will not only give you the effect for which you are trying, on the contrary they will give you bad results too. This you will see in another anecdote later from the same chapter here. The opportunity will come from you. So I am the supreme being. Sarva Mantra Maya Shiva. I am that Lord Shiva the Supreme. Who is nature is all mantras. All the mantras in the world are the body of Lord Shiva, of the Supreme Being. What are mantras? Mantras mean certain sacred syllables. Om, Kreem, Kleem, Dum, Shram, Shram. They are all mantras. Apart from that, these are Vija mantras. But apart from that, there are various mantras. As in Gayatri, as in Urnamo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, it is supposed to be a mantra by itself. Urnamo Narayana, it is supposed to be a mantra by itself. Urnamo Shivaya, it is supposed to be a five syllable. Shivaya. It doesn't refer to any deity with form. All the mantras are in the form of sound. They are all sound effects. They are all sound effects. Each one is designed to remove certain specific obstruction which has been holding up your progress in spirituality. Each one has got his vastness, his conditioning. Somebody is full of avarice and greed. He is never satisfied with what he has got. Somebody is ambitious, rightly ambitious. Somebody is full of anger. Somebody is full of passion and lust. So, before a person could progress in his meditation and reach the higher level of spirituality, these obstructions which are there, they have to be removed. These mantras, they are sound effects which work like laser beams, which go and explode away in due course. The very foundations of all such
governing comedy in the all such obstructions and defects which are gone, they are all removed with you. And not only that, these sounds will be able to let your thoughts concentrate on the Lord, on the Supreme Being. So it ensures concentration and new goals. And they could lead to the final state of Samadhi even by the Swagat Mantra itself. So these are all the sound effects. So all the mantras in the world, whether the mantra is Om, whether the mantra is of Lord Shiva, whether the mantra is of Lord Vishnu, all of them, they are all Lord Shiva only. Sarva Mantra Maya Shiva, I am the Shiva, I am all the mantras. All the mantras, all the sacred ceremonies in the world, which take you to the higher forms of spirituality, is all me. All the sound effects are everything from me. So I am that. Sarva Mantra Vyati Tasya, immediately she is contradicting it. Do you mean to say, when you say that he is the entire sound effect, then we are likely to think that God is limited only by those sound effects. <laughs> so the various sounds which are available, that is the limit of the Lord. No, He is infinite. He is not only all these mantras, He is beyond that too. Sarva mantra vyatita cha. He is beyond. Vyatita means the one that is transcendent, the one who is beyond. So He is beyond all these mantras. He is all the mantras. He is beyond all the mantras. Because these mantras are going to lead to somebody else. So the one to whom you lead through the mantra, it has to be transcending the mantra. So in other words, mantra is the means, the way to reach the Lord. And your destination is the Lord. And it is all the mantras that means I am the way, I am the destination. She is the mantra and he is the Lord to whom you are led by the mantra. Both are he. So I am that. Then Srikti Samhara Varjita. When you say Lord Shiva, you are likely to think, Oh, yes, yes, I have heard of the Trinity. The Brahma, the Vishnu and Shiva. And Shiva is a Samhara Karta. He is the one who creates the dissolution. He is the one who destroys the entire, all the universe when the time comes for the deluge at the end of all the yuga. You see that? No. This Atman, he neither creates nor does he dissolve. He is pure, he is inactive, srikti samhara vajjuta. In him, there is no, nothing is being created, nothing is being dissolved. Then what about this entire world? The entire thing is illusion. The entire thing is only an appearance. It never happens. The entire thing is a drama. It is a dream drama. It is a dream of the cosmic being. So you dream of the cosmic being. It's not a reality. All the things are happening. You see in your dream that you are the king. You are the emperor and African potentate. In East Africa in the place. You are a Zulu warrior in South Africa. Then in reality are you? No. You are the dreamer. The dreamer may be a doctor. The dreamer may be a professional engineer. What is the question of his being an African potentate? Do you know why? So it was only an appearance which appeared and disappeared. So he only reminds there is really in real effect there is neither creation nor dissolution. Srikti Samara Varjita. He is bereft of all creation or dissolution. Next. Maya Vyaksam Idam Sarvam Drishya Drishyam Characharam Ahame Vajagan Nataha Matta Sarvam Prakashate Again you will find a contradiction. Just now he said, I don't create anything. And then he says, he is the one who is all pervasive during all his creations, in all the creations, the moving and the unmoving. But just now you said there is no creation. 
And again you are saying that you are all pervasive and you pervade all your creation. What a contradiction. When you are explaining the inexplicable, such contradictions are inevitable. You have to understand it the best way you can and all the meaning will descend on you through meditation in due course as and when we mature and perhaps the truest meaning will dawn upon us only on the day when we are able to reach the super consciousness. When our level of consciousness is raised to the highest level possible, there is a the day when we understand its true meaning. So far, we like to be satisfied with uh, whatever meaning uh, it tries to give us. Mayavyaptam idam sarvam dushyadrishyam characharam The entire creation, idam sarvam, all this creation of this entire world, idam always represents the world. Idam means this, but in the philosophy, idam represents the world and sometimes it includes the body because body is part of the world. Idam. So idam sarvam, all this entire world, it consists of drishya drishyam. Are we able to see the entire universe? No. There are subatomic particles which you are unable to see. A proton, I mean, ah, a proton is being split into total that way pieces. Not a piece you can see. And there are subatomic particles which do not even remind for 1 by 216 of a second. How can you ever see them? But they are all very much there. So this entire universe which can be seen and which cannot be seen, which are too subtle to be seen, all this is pervaded by me. Because I am the Supreme. Maya Vyaptam Milam Sarvam. Vyaptam means pervaded. I am pervading it all. What does it mean? If this entire world, Drishya, Drishya, whatever can be seen, whatever cannot be seen, whatever is gross, whatever is subtle, chara and achara, whatever is mobile, animals, men, birds, they all come under chara, the mobile. The immovable are the mountains, the pillars, the buildings, they are all immovables. Now all this is pervaded by me and still we can't see him anywhere. What a strange thing. It is because you don't understand the word pervasion in the ordinary meaning that he is there inside and which you can see. Here the pervasion doesn't mean just like a gross clay which forms the pot. So now the entire pot is pervaded by the clay, but you can see the clay. From top to bottom every particle is clay. You can clearly see it is visible. Here it is not visible. <coughs> Here again we have to go, we have to resort to that thing. Um, oft repeated the Raju Sarpa, the serpent and the rope. When you came at that you saw the rope. The rope was in, uh, it was undulated like a wave. It was not straight rope. The rope was having just like these curves. It was curved in four, five places. And at the end, the rope, perhaps it was divided into two or three bits or something was sticking like this. And that first portion was a bit raised like. So in the dusty function, this took it for the serpent. So you are seeing the serpent. This serpent is pervaded all through from beginning to end by the existence of the rope. The serpent would never have existed but for the existence of the rope. If there was no rope, rope, I am not mad enough to imagine a serpent where there was nothing. So the existence of a serpent was dependent on the pervasiveness of the existence of the substratum. The substratum was that rope. So, the rope had pervaded all through, but were you able to see the rope? 
If you have seen the rope, you would never have seen the serpent at all. So in an illusion you saw a serpent. But in reality the serpent was also pervaded by the rope. So you could penetrate through it and see its real form only if you get a torch, somebody to throw light on it, only when you get a preceptor, only when you get that knowledge, the torch of knowledge alone can enlighten you on this world. So this is what is meant by Maya Vyaptam Idam Sarvam Drishyam Drishyam Chara Charam. The entire world is only an illusion. I am the substratum. It is because of my existence you are able to see all these things. If I had not existed, there would have been no existence at all. None of these things would exist. So that is why we say that the Supreme Being is all pervasive in the creation. The entire creation is a dream. The entire creation is an illusion. The illusion is based on some fact, some factual existence. On that the existence of an illusion is problem. So that factual existence I am. Ahameva <coughs> Jagannatha. I am the lord of the entire world, obviously. When the entire world has been made of you, when you alone exist, naturally all this creation is yours, all this cosmic dream is the imagination of the cosmic being, obviously. So he is the lord, he is the master of his destiny. Ahameva Jagannatha. Matta Sarvam Prakashatu. It is only because of the rope you are able to see the presence of the Sarvam. Similarly, this entire world you are able to see, the entire world shines because of the shine from the Sarvam, namely the Brahman, the Supreme Being. It is because of the existence of the Supreme Being that you are able to see the existence of all these various objects of knowledge. The unity has projected itself into multiplicity. The one, you are seeing it in diverse forms. Just like one ray of light, when it is part of the prism, it divides itself into the seven colors, violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. In the same way, it is that one who is projecting himself as the multiple objects of the world. Matta Sarvam Prakashate, this Sarvam, this entire world, Prakashate shine Sarvam, a Mattaha, from me. It is I who illumines the entire world. But for my illumination, you won't be able to see this world at all. All these appearances because of me. Then, next one. Aneka karatam bhinnam vishwam bhavana sanchayam shivat javani parjantam tattarvam maji samsthitam Now she is expressing things further on that world which is an appearance. It is not one world. The entire universe is contained of several worlds. And according to our mythology, we are supposed to have 14 worlds, 7 above, 7 down. <coughs> 7 above are all places with joins, the various heavens. That is why we call the 7th heaven. Brahma Loka or Satya Loka is supposed to be the 7th heaven. And down below, in the nether regions, you have got 7 nether regions. Atala, Sutala, Salatala, Patala, like that there are seven names. And each one has got its own unique features. But all these things, the entire totality of manifestation, not only that, the entire totality of the unmanifested, plus all that is manifested, it's all they have. This is the yeah, totality of meditation. When you think that I am that, in that world that you have to include not any part. You can't say I am this world. You can't say I am this year. You cannot say I am the heaven. Go on thinking of the heaven. You can't say I am this space. 
and think of this way. No, these are all wrong meditations. And the Chandogya built there is a beautiful anecdote as to how six great sages who were extreme scholars, who were extreme tapasvits, they were doing meditation for a number of years. But unfortunately, on the wrong aspects of the Brahman, without taking into account the totality of meditation. This totality is very, very important. Unless we understand it, the entire meditation can prove a catastrophe. It can lead into calamities. So now there is no time. So I don't want to go into this anecdote now. So the next two class we will have it. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow we have tomorrow or no? No. Tomorrow is a crowd. Nice. Tomorrow is the crowd. Incidentally, uh, tomorrow is the following day. There will be a number of people coming in now. There will be disturbance to us, and we will be able to enjoy because these are all special methods of meditation. Many of us are doing it. You see, the most of the modern masters of today, they are all telling you, don't worry, simply sit. Think of the entire ocean, think of the various waves, think you are one of the waves, you go on uh, tumbling about as one of the waves and you reach the Lord. And there are people who tell you, think that you are the space, the infinite space, think of that infinity and sit, you will reach there. All these things are all being done by other so many masters. The chances of the give those very senses and say, the one who does it, Shiraha Nipateksha Jiti. His head will fall down one day. Yes, initially he thinks it will give you all good things. It will give you all prosperity. Because you are worshipping a part. But that part also has got some powers. So those powers will immediately, they will come to you. They will uproot you. You will become famous. You will become wealthy. All people will run after you. Oh, you the greatest of things. But unfortunately, a day will come when either physically or mentally, such a calamity will happen, you will never recover from it and perhaps it will take birth and birth before you can recover and go into the totality of the meditation. I am not telling this, this exact anecdote, it comes in the Chandogya Upanishad. It's a beautiful Upanishad. From the seventh Adhyaya onwards, there are about five chapters or so. I would suggest that people should go through it. <coughs> The various types of the real totality of the meditation, the Atman, it is extremely, I would say, in the fullest detail possible.